Welcome to Book Spectrum. I'm Chris Cordeni, your host. Our job here at Book Spectrum is to bring you authors and writers, whether they've been doing this for a long time or from other professions, that's what we do. I'm willing to bet most people listening, knowing how historically strong the U.S.'s military might has been, believe we are always up on the latest technologies, way above our allies and adversaries. My guest says that's not quite so, and has proof from the inside. Julie Willis is a former strategic communications consultant for government branches, including Army Futures Command, Department of Homeland Security, and the Department of Defense Inspector General. Her new book, Conceal Reveal, The Space Between Entrepreneurs and the Defense Industry, answers questions like, why are U.S. troops lacking the most current technological innovations that can save lives and help them win battles? And how does surveillance by other countries affect our national defense capabilities? She's also the CEO of Defiant Communications. Welcome to Book Spectrum, Julie Willis. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today and speak with your audience. Well, I'm glad you're here. It's well known that the U.S. defense leadership and the private sector have an interdependent relationship and can be an opportunity for knowledgeable entrepreneurs. How did you get involved with the defense entrepreneurship? Ooh, good question. So I started on a contract with Army Features Command back in 2019. And when my position moved as they stood up the headquarters in Austin, I decided to come with it. And that's when I started to meet those entrepreneurs that, you know, are truly driven by the heart to give the warfighter everything that they need. Tell our listeners about your company before we get into the book, Defiant Communications. Well, they're basically the same. So I started my company January 1st of 2020, which in hindsight was a pretty spectacular day to choose. But I had decided along the way that Where I needed to be in order to give the most impact to the warfighter was outside of the bureaucracy. So I started my company to help those entrepreneurs and small businesses who provide that technology or aspire to, to help them market to the military and uh, the Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, uh, any of those stakeholders and customers that are in need of that next generation stuff. Julie, we see an American military tasked with the job of protecting our own borders while others are sent to do the same overseas. We're seen as the world's most powerful nation. One would think that means we're not only strong in manpower, but leaders in military technology. However, in this book, Conceal Reveal, you say that's not so. Why? I'm not the only one, actually. Uh, Congress and the military themselves have acknowledged that our focus has been elsewhere. And as we regroup and focus on getting getting that next generation set up, I mean, there's cross-functional teams for the future of vertical lift, which sounds very fancy, but, you know, in my head, it's a helicopter. But we really do need to think about what that looks like because our adversaries have been doing that while we've been distracted. That's true. And those helicopters, I always wanted my own helicopter. I could call it, hey, (laughs) I could say, quick, to the Chris Copter. And then uh, I could just fly off anywhere. Be a nice big picture of me on the side. I'm in Austin, Texas right now, and I would love to get out of the snow. So, for sure. That's right. (laughs) At at the time we are talking, Texas is getting a, a bit of a taste of what we get here in New York regularly. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I I assume it's not going to be as easy because you don't have the plows or anything else uh, that that we have up here. In fact, I'm in a more southern area of New York. I used to go to school in western New York near Buffalo. So there would be snowstorms, there would be blizzards, and all of a sudden the streets would be cleaned as quickly as you wouldn't believe it. They they know what they're doing. They have the equipment. Whereas we'd be pretty uh, held back, at least if we had a two, two foot, uh, two and a half foot blizzard, which we kind of had just a little while ago. And it took about a day to recover from that. I can could, I could imagine Texas. Yeah. The infrastructure is, you know, it's built by summer engineers. And so we're... We're struggling to keep up right now. Uh, I'm definitely in the lucky bucket. I have electricity and I have the boil water, but um, that is that is doable. That's fully doable. I'm in a very, very lucky position. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure New York can't handle stampedes as well as uh, Texas. <laughs> that, that's, uh, you know... 
I think we could, we could, we could work this out. We could try it. You know, we could be one foot in, in New York, one foot in Texas and compete a little bit, maybe. So here's what we do. We right. up the Texas snow fighting technology <laughs> and we can update the stampede technology here in New York. Our, our governor would have to comply with that, but uh, he's a little, he has his hands full right now. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I love this. See, now you're on the bandwagon, aren't you? You're on the entrepreneur thing. You're you're dipping into that tech. And I love it. That's right. I, I should be a, I should be an entrepreneur when it comes to tech. I can just uh, tell people, hey, look what I have in my suitcase here. And you know what kind of entrepreneur I'd be? I'd be that guy. Have you seen the old movies where the guy is uh, standing against the wall with his foot uh, kind of, uh, well, his knee bent, his foot against the wall, and he's tossing up a quarter and catching it? Then he uh, looks for <laughs> pastors by and says, psst, hey, I have this technology you might like. Or, hey, psst, hey. You, mister, come here. <laughs> that, that's my kind of entrepreneurship. You know, every entrepreneur needs a salesman. <laughs> so maybe that's, <laughs> that would be your role. Julie Willis is with uh, me on Book Spectrum. Her book is Conceal, Reveal, The Space Between Entrepreneurs and the Defense Industry. The COVID lockdown has played a big part in this issue as well. How has the situation opened up doors, though, to espionage and some disruption of our own tech? Yeah, let me tell you a little story, Chris. So Ooh, I like I was stories. In DC. <laughs> I did too. I wrote a book, right? Yeah, and, and this is book I was spectrum. In DC. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Here we are. My my client and I uh, had some meetings on the hill, and we were regrouping after with uh, someone else that he knew, and being as vague as I can, right? And in the the course of this conversation, which of course is in a cop bar, exactly like you would think it would be, you know, in some espionage movie. And that's when he informs us like, oh, yeah, you know, I was fished. And they were asking about like, if, I, if I could meet up after my meeting here in, um, you know, on Monday or whatever day it was. And we were like, wait, what do you mean? He was like, oh, yeah, you know, someone fished me on text and um, you know, I, I sent it up the chain and they confirmed that it was GRU, so it was Russians that were essentially telling him they knew where he'd be, they knew about our meeting, and he didn't tell us until we got to the meeting. And you're like, Whoa, what are you doing right now? Like we're standing like we're we're all sitting here with this weapons grade technology in our hands that we were, you know, in DC to talk to key leaders about. And some guy's just like, oh, yeah, no big deal. Like, this happens every day here in the Beltway. Oh, and that's that's when I realized, like, it is the entrepreneur that is the weakest link for defense technology. Because we seek it, we, like, we being, I think, the, the royal we here. But, you know, the military is looking for that next generation technology. And to get it in the warfighter's hands, they need entrepreneurs who are willing to figure it out, these really tough challenges. And as they do that, they become more and more vulnerable to prying eyes. Like you've got the way that the way that we have set this up for procurement is you publicly put your company name down on something for a proposal, you put an abstract together, a summary, you know, you submit it through this portal. And once it's on the inside, sure, it's secure, but it doesn't mean that you can't go to the .gov and pull a list of all of the winners and the abstracts. So like, how hard is it to know who's working on what? Like, it's a few clicks. Like, this isn't, you know, this is elementary school Googling. I mean, there's people on Tinder who could, who could handle this. But we just, yeah, it's very vulnerable, very vulnerable. And they also don't have the, the enterprise cybersecurity to protect their data, which is something else that I ran into <laughs> in the course of the beginning of last year, uh, starting my company, was realizing that when these entrepreneurs sent me their decks and we would have these conversations, like I was on unsecured lines, I was on unencrypted, you know, my, my little Black Friday purchase off Amazon for my laptop, right? Because I was just starting out my startup. And the last thing you've got the money for is to 
encrypt yourself for things that you didn't think you would need. Well, that's the thing. Everybody has their own skill sets, and a lot of entrepreneurs know what they're doing when it comes to selling, moving product, uh, enterprising, communicating with others. But they're not as a student making sure their communications are as protected as they uh, probably should be. So how does one go about learning this if they say, hey, I'd like to work with defense. I'd like to take one of these opportunities, but I don't want to risk my computer, my safety, or even my country's safety at this point. I want to be fully prepared. I think that's the reason a lot of defense entrepreneurs are former service members themselves is because they have a general understanding of that protected nature that they need to maintain. Um, For folks coming from other industries, it's, it is rough. I mean, I, I had to learn real quick and it, there's actually another story in the book where I call I phone a friend and I say oh my gosh I don't know what to do with my laptop right now because it's got stuff on here that that like should be classified but because it, these are conversations that are happening outside of the government and outside of those layers they're just conversations and people allude to things of course you know and there's IP and no one wants to give away their little trade secrets but there's there's a lot of space in there, a lot of gray space. And it's very expensive to hire a consultant to lock down your your communications and to hold your I don't want to say comms again, but yeah, to hold your comms close. It's very difficult. And that's another thing. Let's take this to the other side. In the book, you also discuss how our military is still open up to some espionage and uh, disruption of our own technology. You've seen this with uh, some problems with the market. Obviously, uh, we can talk about the potential of uh, election safety, cybersecurity issues among corporations, and even our own military. In your book, you say there are companies that can thwart such attacks and advance the armed forces overall tech-wise, but have not been taken to the right hands at the point. Where's the disconnect? And I just find it interesting that the very private sector that can mess us up can actually fix the whole thing, too. (laughs) You're right. You're right. They are both sides of the coin. The biggest question I was asked by clients and potential clients was, how do I get in? And that if there's this desperate, how do I sell this? Like, this can save lives. Why am I not able, you know, to knock on the right door? And the procurement and acquisition system is set up to protect, to protect itself from corruption. And unfortunately, Something that I discovered along the way was there's this, it's called Small Business Innovation Research, and they're contracts, and they're like feeders into the system. So you can get a small one up front, and you do the market research. The second one, you develop a prototype, and and when you get to that third phase, hopefully, you know, you have a full contract to deliver your product. And it's a major pipeline, tons of money in here, but... To get a really strong proposal, you need a, a memorandum of understanding or of, uh, they basically say, this is Uncle Sam writing it, right? And Uncle Sam says, oh my goodness, Chris, if you made that, I'd buy every single one, every single one you could possibly make. You go, oh, okay, great. You put that in your pocket and the person reviewing it's like, well, Okay. I guess we need that. I guess we want that. So to get, right? Yeah. So to get that memo, like who on earth could possibly sign or write such a memo? And the truth is people who have left the system are the people who understand who can do that. And they are consultants on the other side. So you can essentially buy it. 100%. I hate having to say that there's corruption in this system that, that I love and I believe in, but yeah, you can buy it. And it'll cost you between 10 and 50% of that first phase of money, which then means 10 to 50% of that first phase of money is going to somebody's pocket to get a memo. It's unbelievable, but it happens. And they just call it business. I call it corruption because I think the warfighter deserves better. Julie Willis, Conceal Reveal is the book, The Space Between Entrepreneurs and the Defense Industry. Julie, that brings up an interesting point. Like you said throughout this interview, it would be a wise idea for 
entrepreneurs to have military experience if they're going to be uh, working with defense. And the money, that's another thing. They'll pretty much know how to handle things and uh, what money can be moved around here. But that's funny. It's an eye-opening aspect of your book with the massive government spending and the corruption. We used to joke about those $800 hammers and the expensive paper clips from the 1980s. But this has been going on for quite a while, and it still happens. It does. It does. And you know, that is the whole purpose of me actually putting out this book. Like I, I didn't do it to try to you know, line my pockets. No one writes a book that is like this deeply personal about their story and that vulnerable for the sake of, I don't think at least of, you know, hitting major review milestones. What I wanted to do with the book was have the conversation with the key leaders. And thankfully I was able to do that. And I, I hit three branches and I, I know who has read it. And I know they understand it. And really, it is up to them to make the changes in the policies. It's up to them to say, oh, well, gosh, I guess having a memo, you know, make a stronger case for this proposal really isn't serving us, is it? Let's just not do that right now. Like, that's it. And in the absence of that kind of policy change, the entrepreneurs are going to fix it themselves. And that's like, that is the conclusion of the book is that I had a conversation with what ends up being two people um, who are also pursuing this like way around it. So kind of like a crowd, again, like, like Tinder or the match.com of, of government procurement where I can put my tech on a clearly, you know, redacted version and say, Hey, I can do this magical thing. And someone on uncle Sam's side is like, I could use that magical thing and allow that data to pool itself instead of someone who, you know, may or may not know the occasional memo, some handshakes in the background. So I think in the event that policy doesn't change, the entrepreneurs themselves will change it because they are so desperate to contribute to the warfighter. There we go. The book is Conceal Reveal, the space between entrepreneurs and the defense industry. Julie Willis, the author and the CEO of Defiant Communications, is with me on Book Spectrum. We're really going deep here. So let's go to the defensive side. We've established in this conversation the corruption. We've established the nation's proven itself vulnerable to cyber attacks, whether it be from outside or within our borders. Having said that, we're also not prepared for enemy attacks on our national grid, like the, uh, like uh, an electromagnetic pulse attack. What are some opportunities? And again, the private sector can fix this if done the right way. And that's what we've also established here. But what are some opportunities for entrepreneurs, maybe some of whom are listening, who have military experience, to not only make some good business here, but to also help improve our defensive capabilities on such fronts. The critical infrastructure question, huh? Why well, you're you're coming hard. You're coming strong today, Chris. That's what we do here. We we, we we're not all <laughs> fluffy. This isn't a town hall meeting uh, with the friendly uh, cable networks. It's a, this is this is an in depth thing because your book. Well, hey, you did it first. Your book was in depth, so I have to ask the questions. <laughs> It's your fault. I started it. All yeah, your fault, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, it's easy to talk about infrastructure right now as I'm sitting in Texas and I'm lucky to have running water and electricity and my neighbors may or may not. And there's redundancies in the way that military bases and um military operations happen. You know, they they have generators, they have they ensure mission success. And if that means that they have to have a couple extra, you know, trucks with supplies, they're going to have trucks with supplies. And so I think there's a reason why uh, Governor Abbott yesterday had the Texas National Guard at his press conference. Like no one knows preparedness the way that our military does. And watching that, I think, is a really good opportunity for entrepreneurs to see some opportunities. Um, I know AFWERCS, the Air Force um, kind of expeditionary procurement arm and engagement, 
they do challenges throughout the year. And I think they did one recently on base security. You know, things like that are a really good opportunity, not only to learn like what the military is interested in for entrepreneurs, but also where they're heading. And it's ironic that we have um, that Mars landing or the rover today at the same time as I'm like, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have gas, so I can't really boil water. Is there another plan here on Earth? But it's, uh, you know, we are looking to the future and that's what entrepreneurs do. So it's a, it's a really great space to be in if you want to think big. It's a book about harsh realities of our condition today when it comes to defense and excellent opportunities for the wise entrepreneur and as well as solving problems. The title, Conceal Reveal, The Space Between Entrepreneurs and the Defense Industry. Julie Willis, the author, is with me. Julie, thank you for being with us on Book Spectrum. Thank you, Chris. This was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with you, too. The book you can find on digital outlets. You can also find a link to buy Julie's book on our website, bookspectrum.com. Julie, how can people find out more about you? LinkedIn, please. There you go. Yes. Find That'll go straight to my phone. Find Julie on LinkedIn. I think we just connected on there, too. That's uh, it's always a good thing. We're LinkedIn, friends now. That's right. LinkedIn's a good place to meet <laughs> business people. <laughs> Some yeah. good stuff on there. What do they start censoring people a lot more? And then, well... <laughs> Pop off. <laughs> That's a, that is a different episode, Chris. Come on now, one at a time. I've only written one book. Maybe yeah. entrepreneurs could uh, make some money within that industry as well. But we'll, we'll, I guess we can talk about that another time. <laughs> <laughs> Julie Willis, once again, thank you for being with us. I'm Chris Cordani, and thank you for listening to Book Spectrum. Book Spectrum.